You know, uh, Naaman came, and look at verse 11 uh, here. Naaman said, when, when, when Elisha said, just go and dip it, he sent his, his messenger and said, go dip, go dip in, in, in the Jordan. Look at Naaman's reaction in verse 11. Naaman was furious. He went away and, and said, indeed, I said to myself, he, he will surely come out to me and, and stand and call upon the name of the Lord his God and where, wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. Naaman was expecting something from Elisha. He had it all mapped out in his mind. I'm going to go there and knock on his door and the man's going to come out and the heavens are going to part and he's going to raise. I mean, Naaman had it all in his mind. And see, but Naaman was focusing on Elisha. Elisha wanted Naaman to focus on God. So he was very purposeful. He wasn't being rude, but he did it so that there would be no mistake. There would be no mistake who healed Naaman. Secondly, he refused to take a reward from Naaman as well. Naaman came ready to give Elisha a reward. Uh, It said in verse 16, As the Lord lives before whom I stand, I will receive nothing Nothing, and he urged him to take it, but Elisha refused. Now, there's a reason for this because in Naaman's culture, when you went to a prophet or you went to a soothsayer or a fortune teller, if they were to give you something in service, you would pay for it. You know, you would give them money for what they did. And Elisha did not want Naaman to think that Elisha created this this healing, that Elisha had any power in himself. He was doing everything to make Naaman focus on the Lord and making sure he had no part whatsoever with God's glory. And that, you know, that's, a, that's an important thing because God will not share his glory with another. And you know, sometimes we're, we might be put in a situation and we might think well of ourselves, but I'm telling you, you don't want to get in the way of, of God's glory. And uh, Elisha certainly wasn't at all interested in taking any glory from God. And he, he, the Lord was directing him so that Naaman would be focused on God. Now look at Naaman's response. We know that this is, this is what not Elisha wanted because Naaman responded in a certain way. Verse 15, what does Naaman say? Understand, this is a heathen. This is a, an ungodly man. He was a part of Syria, which was an enemy of Israel. He worshiped false gods. They didn't, they didn't worship the God of Israel. They worshiped false gods. Look what he says in verse 15. He says, now I know. Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel, that's quite a statement from, from an ungodly man, right? I mean, that's what, that's what Elisha wanted his response to be. Look at verse 17. He says, that your servant will no longer offer either burnt offerings or sacrifice to other gods, but to the Lord. Again, he is, he is going to this, 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 this monotheistic thing where, when they would worship many gods. I know now there is only one God and I'm going to worship him and I'm going to sacrifice only to him. Verse 18, look at this other response of Naaman. Will you pardon your servants? What is he asking for? He's asking for forgiveness. Please forgive. Notice also he calls himself something there. Your servant. Before a, pro- this is amazing to think about. This, this, the commander of the army of Syria, this man is powerful. This man could, you know, tell his servants to kill him and he would have, he would have been dead. He's going before a, a lonely, ho- uh, 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 humble prophet, bow- might have bowed before him, but he called him your servant. Elisha, I'm, I am your servant. See, that's a, a place of humility. That was the response that Elisha wanted out of Naaman. Elisha also had a heart for others. Not only did he want God to to receive all the glory, and what he did was was to ensure that, but he also had a heart for other people. Look what he said to to Naaman as Naaman left. He refused his gifts, and he sent Naaman on his way. What does he say to Naaman? He says, go in peace. Yeah, that's that's a blessing. Go in peace. He was a foreigner. He was ungodly, and Elisha extended grace to this foreigner, didn't he? He cared about Naaman. He he did everything he did so that Naaman would be confronted with God and Naaman responded, but Elisha cared about Naaman. His desire was for for the other person. He also, I believe, had a heart for Gehazi as well. You know, in in verse 26 there, uh, at the end of our story, when when, uh, when, uh, Gehazi came and stood before Elisha after he had taken what he shouldn't have taken and hid what he you know, it sounds a lot like Achan, doesn't it? Reminds me of Achan in, in the Babylonian when, he, when they went to Jericho and he stole the, the wedge of gold and the garments and he hid them in his tent. And then at the battle of Ai, Israel was defeated because Achan hid. He coveted and then he hid. 
Sounds a lot like that. But he hid this, and then he goes and stands before Elisha. And what does Elisha say to him after he asks him a question? He gives him an opportunity here to repent and to acknowledge what he did wrong. You know, where did you go? I didn't go anywhere. You know, he pretends like nothing happened. What does he say? He says, did not my heart go with you? You know, that's, that's such a statement of, of, of compassion, statement, not a statement necessarily of judgment, of you idiot, why did you do this kind of thing? My heart, I think, I think Elisha's wanted Gehazi to succeed, and it broke his heart when he didn't, when he failed. Elisha's desire was for the glory of God and for others as well.